What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. And we are here for part two of our Madden 21 realistic rebuild of the Miami Dolphins. Year one for the Dolphins we missed out was kind of expected, I guess. Five and 11 were the third worst team in the league, but five wins for Tua Tagovailoa in his rookie season. It's something to build upon. And as you remember, we won our final game of the season, week 17, over the Buffalo Bills, who won the division, so we were able to carry some momentum into this offseason. So for free agency, we had a decent chunk of money, 46 million bucks, and I left a question to you guys whether or not we should double up at safety and go all in in improving this team. Now, we had an original question of maybe Alvin Kamara could be an option, but the fact that we've signed Alvin Kamara a couple times on the channel, he's always there in free agency, and Jordan Howard... While he did have some limitations to his yardage, still had 10 touchdowns last year. It just doesn't make a lot of money to spend top tier money on a running back right now. So I have decided with a lot of comments that you guys left on that video, let's go all in on the secondary. Because our safeties, Eric Rose is 74, Bryce McCain's a 76. There's just not a lot of upside here. Now, debatably at free safety, you could probably try to gamble on 23-year-old Brandon Jones who's a 71. Maybe, maybe, but you know what's easier? Just throwing in some bids. Unproven talents. Desmond King, strong safety, formerly of the Chargers. Scheme fit, 89 star dev. And then obviously Marcus Williams, 24, 87 star dev. Scheme fit, you know, I, I feel like let's shut it down. Brian Flores, defensive mind that's given the pieces that he needs. You pair that with the fact that we have Xavier Howard. We have Byron Jones. We have first round pick Noah Bogney. Like this is going to be, hopefully, on paper, one of the best secondaries in the NFL if we can get it. Now, there's no bids on Des King, so I feel like we probably should be able to get it. Marcus Williams is a little more finicky. The Raiders and the Jags all have solid bids. And then I just figured let's kind of bring back our star dev punter because there's no other bids placed on him. So we'll be gambling. I mean, running back is still, you know, it makes sense to just not be content with Jordan Howard. But 10 touchdowns, I feel like... I feel like there's room to grow. I feel like now that if we... We had Matt Breida, kind of kind of one-two punch there, right? And Matt Breida, about 400 yards. Jordan Howard, about 600. If we just had Jordan Howard as our bell cow, he could have been 1,000 yards, double-digit touchdown. So I feel like Jordan Howard did enough to give him an opportunity to try and be lead back RB1 for this Dolphins team next season. And uh, we're going to spend and allocate all of our funds to hopefully landing two of the best safeties that will hit the market in this rebuild. And look at that. Everyone is buying in to what Brian Flores is building down here in Miami. All three targets have locked up. Let's get into the draft. So here's the draft at pick three. It is a tough... <laughs> Literally the two players I would have wanted are off the board. Suell went first overall. Rousseau went second overall. Uh, even, you know... So here, we're at pick three. Now, at pick three... You know, we're not going quarterback. Micah Parsons kind of makes sense, but then you will get it. Van Noy and Shaq Lawson both went up to superstar devs. It just doesn't make sense. We could look at wide receiver here, like a Jamar Chase, a Rondale Moore, uh, reuniting Jalen Waddle, but none of those guys are worth a third round. And like the best value would be Wyatt Davis, and there's just no way I could justify picking a guard at three overall. So what I'm going to do is see if I can find a trade back. I was looking here at some of like the actual... Just generated offers. There's some solid ones. Uh, we got two first from the Cleveland Browns, but essentially we'd be trading third for 32nd. I feel like we might be able to do a little better. I want to just drop back even four or five spots to see if we can get Wyatt Davis somewhere around there. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what kind of trades I can come up with, and hopefully we'll be good with it. All right. Get a little bit of capital here. Moving back two spots, we're able to pick up a second round pick from the Las Vegas Raiders. So the Raiders grabbed Micah Parsons. I, I feel like now that we're pick five, like I, one of these guys need to go QB. Just don't take Wyatt Davis. That's who we want. They got Dylan Moses. I feel like we, we did we did our part. We pick at 14 again. We're here at five. Um, I just don't know if we need a wide out, man. Oh, it's so tough. Like five still feels so rich for a right guard. With Jamar Chase. But we need to... Let's do it. Let's get Jamar Chase. Number four. We got him at 577. Hidden Dev out of LSU. 
slot. He's a slot scheme. We kind of need a slot guy. But, oh, man, I hope we can get Wyatt Davis. If not, we might have to trade up. Nope. Went right off the board here. Pick six. Two. The Panthers, he's 77. Most likely a hidden dev. So, uh... It's just one of those things. Now we're just going to see what wide receivers there. Pick 14. And then way, like, we could have got Wyatt Davis and then a wide, wide out there. But, damn it. All right. At pick 14, I, we have to go on the O-line here. We have two scouted offensive linemen that look good. Jackson Carmen out of Clemson got mid-first round. We have Creed Humphrey, mid-first round center that I feel like. You look at the, when you look at our team, if we still want hope. That Austin Jackson left tackle can be the option. Let's keep him there, right? And then you look at center. We have Dieter, who was originally drafted to be a guard. So we can move him to guard. Let's go Creed Humphrey. I think he's probably the safest lineman in this draft after Sewell. Getting him at pick 14. He's right in that same tier, that same bubble that Wyatt Davis is. So he's number 10 in true value. Getting him at pick 14. 76. Hidden dev for the powerful X. I think he's a wrestler too out of Oklahoma. So let's see the kind of damage we did outside of the first round. And uh, obviously, Jamar Chase, Creed Humphrey, I was happy with it. I felt like it was just too good to be true not to get a Bama wide receiver from the Tua era, even though maybe it could be viewed as like overkill going two wide receivers this quickly, given the fact that we have Preston Williams and Devontae Parker. But Devontae Parker's 28. There's a, ch there's a chance for sure that we maybe have to cut some ties with one of those wide receivers before all is said and done. So it's good. He never hurts to have a wide receiver four. Plus with injuries on it. It's not like rebuilds of past where there's no injuries and everyone's always going to be healthy. It's, it, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of wide receiver depth. So we're reuniting him. No depth trade, but 71 is not a brutal base overall starting point here for the Bama wide receiver. And we got one back here. The three depth trades. Oh, I already know people in the comments are going to love it. Uh, we got Chuba Hubbard, the Canadian dream at running back. Didn't really want to contradict everything with, you know, committing to Jordan Howard, but... It's like one of those things again. I mean, I was like, all right, we're going to go Jordan Howard. Let them be RB1. Every time in a rebuild so far that we've kind of altered our position, being trading a guy, be it not resigning a guy, that impending position always seems to have an injury crisis the following year. So it's good to have a contingency plan, an insurance policy in case Jordan Howard does not pan out or gets hurt. So we got Chuba Hubbard here, one of the fastest players in college football, track and field star out of Oklahoma State, and of course, Canadian. Uh, outside of that, we got Hutchison here on the defensive line the second round, 69. Uh, Solid-looking player. We got Jacoby Stevens. I needed a middle linebacker. Now that now looking back on it, now looking back on it, I mean, the dev trade, the fact that Devontae Smith is only normal, maybe not, but if we could have grabbed, you know, Wyatt Davis at pick five and then at pick 14, get like Dylan Moses, say the line middle linebacker from Alabama, and then got Devontae Smith, it might have been... I don't know. I don't want to second guess ourselves already, like just in the draft recap screen. But I think this draft might have been able to handle better considering I need a middle linebacker. And we got Jacoby Stevens, who's like one of those hybrid safety linebackers. He's only 64, but he has a scheme fit. So there's some silver lining there. We got Asante Samuel Jr., 66 normal. We got Trey Hill, 67 normal. We got Navon Donaldson just adding depth on the offensive line, 66 normal. And then an Alabama outside linebacker for depth in Ben Davis. So we started out well with the dev traits. Ended up with three in the draft class, but given the fact that we had one, two, three, four, five, six, six picks in the first three rounds and only essentially half of those got devs, it could have been a lot better in terms of picking some home run picks, but I'm content because we're not going to have this type of draft ammunition for really quite some time. So let's, let's be happy that we hit and now get ready and prepared for all of the Madden Generate draft classes where... To be honest, we haven't drafted particularly well, at least for dev trade players. So it's time to kick off the 2021 season, and we're going to start things out on the road against the Patriots. Because what better way to lay stamp on a new season than beating the team that's owned this division for like 20 years? So I think we could start out well there. Uh, we're 78 overall. We're still, you know, still very much a work in progress. Still definitely very much a work in progress. But here are going to be the changes here. We have Jamar Chase will be our slot wide receiver. We got Chuba Hubbard chipping in with Jordan Howard. On the offensive line, Humphrey will be starting at center. We're taking Dieter there at guard. Um, we're going to keep Jackson, Kinley, and Robert Hunt along the offensive line. So it's young. Let's hope it keeps growing, developing. Flores, I think we need five, 600 XP to get the O-line package for experience. And we're going to do that. That's top priority right now. 
But hey, it would be nice to see Gusecki continue to be a guy that's like, you know, diddles with a thousand yards. Preston Williams with a thousand yard receiver last year. Devontae Parker was four yards away from being a thousand yard receiver. So let's hope the offense is still on point. Flipping to the defense, you can still see the weakness here at middle linebacker. And, uh, you know, maybe why we're second guessing our draft a little bit. But hey, Stevens, he, he's a scheme fit. He fits what we want. We want pass coverage linebacker. He's a converted safety. We have Williams and Desmond King, our two big money free agency signings. Better improve this defense. We were 31st overall last year. Completely unacceptable. We're still going with Abagnahi Jones and Howard at the cornerback spot. Raekwon Davis takes over as our new D tackle with Wilkins and Agba on the outside. So I'm not, I don't know what kind of expectations I'm going to put on this team this year. I just want to see, say, Tua take his game to the next level and the defense to maybe shave off 10 spots from being 31st. See if we can get a top 20 defensive performance here out of Brian Flores' unit. Ooh, Jamar Chase across the middle. That's what he's meant to do. Oh, not enough juice. But he's a slot wide receiver. That's what he ran at LSU. And it looks like he's going to carry right over to the NFL. All right, a big third and 12 here. Don't really want to, you know, after that huge explosive play, you don't really want to fizzle out. And the execution's not there. Need more reps between Chuba and Tua to connect on that one. We sell for a field goal. Third and long again. You know, we're just, we're just a little rusty. A little rusty out the gates. Do we get a block? No. Are we in field goal range? Probably not. Back to, ooh, 56 yards. Can I hit this? Best damn kicker on YouTube. Don't you forget it. Pick the ball up. Pick. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Opening game and looking like the Philadelphia Eagles. How unprepared we are. I. Oh, my God, man. I hate. I. Like, anytime I. I'm not a great user linebacker, but pretty much anytime I play a Cam Newton, Lamar Jackson, Kyle, I have to just manually spy because the AI cannot contain quarterbacks that scramble in this game. Dude, I hit Y. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, get me. Oh, get off me. Stiff arm? Can we get a little stiff arm there? Thank God we got to play. Let's go. Oh, that's a great ball. Should have got a touchdown there, but that was a great pass. Come on, 10 touchdowns a year ago. Power back, short yardage specialist. Jordan Howard, get in there. And of course he can't. Patriots are up to the task. Third and goal. We're at the drop back and pass. Uh, let's see if we can go right back to Gasecki here. Let's not act like we don't have a chance. Okay? Let's not act like we don't have a chance here. Because we do. You cannot execute for a whole bunch of quarters and you can get a chance. Defense was able to get a safety in the sim because I was fed up. So we got eight points now. Need a touchdown here. Let's go Miami. Go wide dig. Now this might be like one of the coldest performances I've seen to kick off a season. But it is on the road. And we got a little bit of daylight. That's a terrible ball. A terrible ball from Tua Tagwailoa. Jamar Chase had daylight and Tua threw up a duck. Underthrown. Should have been punished, but wasn't. Terrible performance from Tua. And that first game was a precursor for the season as we are now here at week five bye. And we're still looking for a win. We are god awful. We have an injury here to Preston Williams. Broken toe. But luckily we did get... Devontae Smith that helps us with a little bit of depth there. Player of the week. Went to Tua, actually, with a, you know, an okay performance. Again, nothing really to write home about. Easily the worst award winner on the week. But, man, this ain't good. This is not good. I've, you know, to scout 
positions that we need. We need pretty much everything. I am not happy or satisfied with a single positional group, but I guess middle linebacker, if I had to pick, would be the group that I would like to just bring in a brand new starter in. There's actually That's actually pretty good. Jerry Holmes, sounds like a porn star from the 90s. Uh, Beckham, Hughes, I mean, a couple second rounders ain't bad. All right, well, I mean, there's some okay options for middle linebacker. Uh, contracts, as we sit here, uh, I think Gusecki, don't want to let him walk. Four-year deal. Wants a little bit more money. Of course he does. Preston Williams, even though he's banged up, was our 1,000-yard receiver a year ago. Would like to keep him in the building. Definitely want Jerome Baker still there, uh, given that it's already a position that's not the strongest. We can't let a guy that still has a fairly high ceiling just walk out the door. Um, obviously with Chuba Hubbard gives us a little bit luxury with Jordan Howard here a little bit. So let's kind of wait and see, but yeah, Baker and Mike Gusecki for sure are playing themselves into new contracts. Yes. First victory took us fucking forever, but we got it. Week six, 27, 20 over the bucks. How, who played well? Hey, What? Did my coach bench him? There's no way. There must have just been like a, a, a stinger or something. Nick Mullins coming in. Okay, that's not exactly what you want to see. Gusecki, that's what you want to see. That's why we're going to give him a contract extension. Xavier Howard, we got three picks. All of our good young corners with interceptions. All right, gives us something to think about. Tua needs to play better. Back-to-back -back wins here. Now, let's see if this was Tua. Was Tua responsible for this one? Because if not, okay, thank God. If not, I was getting ready just to serve up some... Maybe we could actually trade Nick Mullins from that performance. I don't know, but this is a solid win there for Tua. Run game was non-existent, but almost 100 yards and a tutty for uh, Jamar Chase defensively. Still not getting any sacks. Jacoby Stevens, a rookie. Actually, two TFLs and a pick. That's a great performance there. But a little bit concerning, the lack of sacks and pressure that we're getting on defense. Week 8, losing a close one against a very solid Tennessee Titan team. But from that, while Jordan Howard is frustrated, we have a breakout scenario here for Mike Gusecki. Looking to go from a star to a superstar dev player. And he needs 150 yards, three touchdowns against the one win of Buffalo Bills. Kind of the Patriots running away with it. I feel like, I feel like we can hop in and get Gusecki that superstar depth. So let's do it. Third and one, come on, defense. This is supposed to be Mike Gusecki's day. Mine. Oh, let's go. Williams. With the pick. I don't even know who this is off the top of my head. Who the hell is M? Oh, it's Marcus Williams, of course. The safety we just signed for the Saints. Let's go. Chase. Finally a first down. Let's see if we can get a gameplay touchdown here. That'd be nice. Man, that dude don't want a dev trade. This guy don't want a dev trade upgrade. Let's go for it. Fourth and goal on the one. Jordan Howard, the one thing he's supposed to be really good at. Let's get stuffed and still be going. Six. Yeah, there we go. First touchdown of the day. All right, need D to make a play. Defense has played well. Got the interception. Just forced Josh Allen into making a bad decision. Or have him get Cole Beasley wide open on third down. It's a smart play. Another third down. Feeling good. I'm actually honestly feeling like chucking my controller at the, <laughs> at the beginning. is uh, affecting some of the inputs that I'm having here. But that there, good PBU. Igbong Nahi. And we hold him to a field goal attempt. There we go, Gusecki. There we go. Show some fire, bud. Fifth tutty of the year. That's huge. We might, we actually might have a chance in the second half to get him that death. No way. OPI. There's no way we just got mossed by Cole Beasley. That looked like a push off. That looked like a push off, right? Can I get the replay, please, Mister? Audio video truck. Look at the arm. Never. Hell of a play. Hell of a play. 
hell of a grab. Devontae Smith, that Auburn connection is good, plus 15. Third and one, Gusecki is out there. Come on. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on, Michael. Um. Yeah, take the points. Hey, there we go. There we go. Nice sack, Kyle Van Noy. Third and long for Buffalo. We have a chance here, ladies and gentlemen. As long as Cole Beasley isn't going to make a highlight reel catch on us for the second time this game, we should be able to get a stop. Whole new field goal. And there you go. Terrible decision, Josh Allen. And whole new field goal. Oh, he's getting close. He is getting very close. Like we need like one more catch. Mike Gusecki, 145 more yards to go up Dev Trade. Let's run the score up though. Let's establish our dominant second teddy of the game for Jordan Howard. Fifth touchdown of the season. Give us you know, something to think about, about re-signing him and keeping him here with Chuba Hubbard. Unlikely, but, you know, if he gets 10 touchdowns again, 20 TDs in two years, I might have to consider it. All right, and here we go. Breakout player scenario. Mike Gusecki, 12 catches, 160 yards, superstar dev. That's a huge playmaker, a huge safety net to have for Tua's development over the next remaining three seasons. And taking a look of Gusecki, now up to an 85 overall. Uh, he got the balance beam, avoid stumbling while carrying the ball, and spin cycle. Kind of weird abilities for him, but take it. Beggars can't be choosers at this point, and we need playmakers on the offense. Well, we got a partial ACL tear here on Jordan Howard. Not looking great for him getting a contract extension. We're on the tails of three straight divisional losses. Beat the Bills. Patriots loss, not impressive. Jets loss, horrible. Bills loss, horrible. It's just, what does this team need to do to take its game to the next level? I'm not quite sure. But in the battle of the three and eights, we are able to knock off Atlanta here. 34-28, a little bit better of a performance. Scoring some points on offense. Three touchdowns for Tua. That's actually a pretty nice performance. Five touchdowns for Tua. Okay. Mark Chase had a huge game, 100 yards, three touchdowns. Jerome Baker made plays all over the field. I'll take that dub. You know, I wasn't expecting really to make the playoffs here in year two. I just want to see more good than bad. And now we're here, week 17, bunch of more losses in a row. 4 and 11 is not good. I'll single hop it in and play this one, but I kind of want to lose. And that's not being overly confident in my play, because honestly, if I. I don't know what's worse. What's it more likely that we're going to actually lose this game? If I played it or if we. If we simmed it, but we'll trust the sim to get the L to help us out with a draft pick so that we can really attack year three. And there we go. That's what we wanted. We wanted that loss. And there's an injury. Desmond King's back. Um, Yeah, a rough year. A rough year. We had some good player development. We had a really solid draft. Uh, two was up to an 82 overall, staying within that scheme fit. Still looking for that 90 throw power. Did we get it? Yeah. Did we have it? Have we did it? Yeah, no. I don't know why. I don't, he, that, I'm not even saying he needs to get 90 throw power, but it'd be nice for Creed Humphrey here. We're doing a little bit of agile, a little bit of just power. We don't want to just suck up all of his early development on trying to make him a scheme fit and not having his rating go up any, but there is a balance there for sure. Jamar Chase got a new ability. His jukebox, reach for it, which means he's a superstar, which I'm not surprised. He's the number one wide receiver in the draft class, and we picked him with a top five pick. But look at the rest of the draft uh creed huffer we got two first rounders both superstars not surprised one bit jamar chase best wide receiver in the class creed humphrey probably second best lineman after suel so getting the superstar dev is a big help chuba hubbard only a star dev could have been even juicier but i will take the star dev it's not that bad it's not the end of the world uh nothing on defense nope but obviously, um, Gisecki, that was the best thing we accomplished in this episode outside of the draft. 
was getting Gusecki up to a superstar. So we went from zero superstars on this offense to three at the end of year two. So there are positives we can take from that. Uh, let's look at the stats, though. Bottom dwellers back-to-back -back years. The number one overall pick. Number one overall pick. Cool. We can work with that. We can work with that. I mean, what what spot we go at is probably up for grabs. Um, again, if there's like maybe a if there's a can't miss franchise tackle, which we know in a generated draft class, ninety percent of the time will be a normal dev. Maybe we pull the trigger, but outside of that, I could say an edge rusher. I don't think there's a middle linebacker worth drafting. We scouted all those guys. There's some good guys in the second and third round. So, um, I mean, even I don't know, honestly. But we have the first overall pick and plenty of ideas to think about. So that's what we'll get. I'll sim through this offseason and get up to that first round pick. And you guys can help me decide who we actually pick with that first round selection. If it's not already obvious. So look at the stats here. How did we achieve this? Well, Tua was not good. 18 touchdowns, 10 picks. I did not enter this Miami Dolphin rebuild expecting to be questioning Tua as our franchise quarterback. But here through two seasons, you know, he's kind of in that, like, in real life to make a comparison. Like Sam Darnold, maybe. Where, like, you, you know, you think you know the talent is there. You can't put much more weapon. I mean, the O-line, yeah, 46 sacks isn't great. But, I don't know. This could be a scenario that next year, if Tua underperforms again, we might have to do something excessive potentially uh running the ball was not ideal i mean seven touchdowns for two is not bad uh but you know hey jordan howard set to hit free agency best of luck to you we're gonna go with chuba hubbard going forward as far as receivers exceptional year for the rookie jamar chase 74 catches 1200 yards eight touchdowns solid year for gasecki going up to the superstar dev eight and six we got seven and four Devontae parker five and nothing for preston williams i guess the question could be do we see, like, especially maybe in Devontae Parker's case, do we see we can flip him? We're, we're in an all-out rebuild mode. He's 29. He's, he's in that port part of his career that he's probably looking to, to try to chase a ring. He's talented. Bunch of teams, bunch of teams probably looking to add a wide receiver's capabilities to get them over that hump to win the Super Bowl. I mean, maybe we field offers on him. That's kind of how I'm thinking it. Field offers, maybe at the draft, see where we can make some moves. I don't know. Uh, Jerome Baker, back-to-back -back years leading the team, 120 tackles, 5 TFLs, 10 sacks, Van Noy, but you can definitely see we're lacking an edge rusher. Consistent edge, like that's where we probably want to go in the first round at pick one, if there is a guy that can, that can fix that. And if, if it's one of those scenarios we are running a 3-4, if said guy, like if, there's, if it's like a Miles Garrett, Bosa, can't miss player, maybe it's, it's, it's going to be a big enough selection that we maybe have to look at changing our schemes, because obviously... You know, it is tough getting sacks in a 3-4 here in Madden 21. But we, uh, I say that. I say that we need to get better on the defense. But our offense was worse than our defense this year. So, you know, really it almost might be BPA. MVP is Jameis Winston. I don't know how to, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Being honest. But hey, that's, it is what it is. I can only tell you what's going on. As far as our Miami Dolphins, I'm not expecting to have, much. Jamar Chase was runner-up for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Chuba Hubbard, number five. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Well, Jacoby Stevens, our middle linebacker. That'd be cool if we can get him off that normal dev. And he actually came ahead of Dylan Moses, a linebacker. I was second-guessing, not drafting. All right. For the individual awards, uh, I mean, we might have Jamar Chase on the wide receivers. What she do? He's at number five. Nothing for a lineman. For D lineman, nothing. Linebacker. Then DB, then yeah, it's just a bad year. It's a bad year, forgettable year. But we have the number one overall pick. Let's make the most of it. Trying to honor our players that were able to stumble into the Pro Bowl on this year. Jamar Chase, the rookie at wide receiver four. Uh, is Olivier Vernon County was here with Miami for a while. Feels like there's something there, right? Half counts. Yeah, only one player. Back-to-back -back years, I think we only had one guy. Jacoby Stevens, Defensive Rookie of the Year. No dev trait increase, but we did get three points here, which will bring him up to a 70 overall. Is that enough to completely ignore the linebacker position? Probably not, but maybe it means we don't have to reach for one of those middle linebackers. Um, I mean, if you got that kind of production, maybe he'll get a dev trait again next season. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. 
It really definitely does sting missing out on that just free dev trade upgrade. Let's see if anyone else on our team did get blessed with that. Uh, and not on the offense. Defensively. Uh, Williams? Marcus Williams? Paid money to bring him in as a star dev and paying immediate dividends going up to a superstar. How? Was he good last year? No, I guess 96 tackles and a pick. Not brutal. I'll take it, man. Free dev traits all around. So we actually had like no money of salary cap. And I was like, what? We have such a young roster. And then it like, oh, it clued into me. There are a bunch of dudes that are just sucking up the old salary cap here. So let's start freeing some room here. First off, we'll get rid of Jakeem Grant. Free up a little bit of money there. Then when we flip to the offensive line, Eric Flowers, we can get $7 million bucks by dumping his big-ass salary off. So that's good. Um, Jesse Davis, yeah, again, there's like the other 2.5 mil, which is helping us out defensively. I don't think there's as many egregious contracts on the defensive side of the ball, but I'm sure we'll be able to find something. Um, oh, hi. Bobby McCain. Goodbye, Bobby McCain. Don't need that. And Eric Rowe. You could definitely... Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, nah, I like Eric Rowe, though. Because once upon a time, I did fall in love with him during the draft process. So we'll get rid of Fijeldim and free up a little bit of salary cap there. So as we look towards free agency, went from 13 mil up to $43 million. Where do we need? Kicker, we can draft one. Spent all of our money on safeties last year. Secondary, Jair Alexander's there, but we don't have that. Oh, man, this is a great year to need a corner. Oh, can I get rid of Xavier? What is the cap implications if I cut Xavier Howard? Because I would rather either one of those guys over Xavier Howard. That's automatic. That's automatic. Goodbye. Best of luck elsewhere. And we're going to go in here. And we're going to put a bid on it. And then we have the two options, Jai Alexander and Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey's the less common of the two. There's no bids on him. So let's get Marlon Humphrey. That will, that's how we're going to start things off here. And look at the rest of the options here. I'm not overly impressed with the guys. I mean, there's some solid players for sure. I'm thinking Mike McGlinchey gets the next big offer. And there's already some really competitive offers on him. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to say there's going to be a cakewalk to secure his service. So let's do something like this. Three years, 43 mil, should cut us over 100 points. It does. So we're spending, man. We are trying to make a change because we are stuck in that purgatory. We're going to be good or going to be bad. Marlon Humphrey, no other bids. 50 million bucks. He's only 26. That's automatic. McGlinchey would maybe make it so we don't have to burn our first round pick, first overall pick on a franchise tackle. So fingers crossed. And it's a clean sweep yet again. I mean, I'm kind of feeling, I'm being conscientious in the back of my head here. Back-to-back -back years, we've signed and spent a lot of money in free agency. We are a young roster. This might be the last time we can go buck wild for a little bit. Um, but that's huge. Mike McGlinchey, franchise right tackle. We could actually probably move him to left tackle if we really want to. It's up to us. And then you throw someone like Marlon Humphrey there. Big upgrade over Xavier Howard. Probably not that much more expensive than the contract Miami gave Xavier Howard. Byron Jones now. Is one and oh my god, let's go all out rebuild the secondary. If I am not at least top 20 in defense last year, I should be fired. Now the fifth year option here on Christian Wilkins. I don't even like half the time remember he's on our defense, so absolutely not picking up that fifth year option. So we are now on the clock, and here's our big board just scouting everywhere. I guess you know, I can't necessarily shut the door on corner. Uh, there's early for it's a strong corner class and is a ever going to really live up to that first round billing probably not but given how much we've invested in the corner spot i'm a little skeptical i mean some of these guys like this guy here james carmichael out of wisconsin looks incredible but it's corner do we need a corner so then you go on to the defensive line which is you know you need a game changer right if you're not getting a quarterback we're definitely far from pulling the rug out from to a tag of Iloa. You got to look at the DN here. And we got Sterling O'Neal, mid-first round DN, 6'6", 280. Kind of a scheme fit. I'm not I'm not overly concerned there because you also throw in, you got Lance Tyson in the fifth round. Still a first round grade. He's probably, you know, high 60s, low 70s. And we can still get a good talent there in the fifth round. Same kind of goes here at right defensive end. A couple good looking guys. This guy here might be the best player. 
Dwayne Bush. Combine looks good. The top skills are skills I don't really care for for a defensive end. But the combine's insane. This you know size fits our scheme. It looks good, right? Uh, you got Madison here, another player, mid first rounder, not as good. But then there's still a guy in the fifth round here, Eric Murray. That's an early second rounder. This guy's a fringe first rounder, so you know you're getting a seventy plus guy here in Eric Murray. So if we don't decide to go D end, there's guys in the fifth round, two players in the fifth round that are almost first round talents. But is Dwayne Bush the best player? And if we're staying in a 3-4, that kind of opens things up to be able to look at defensive tackles because defensive tackles will most likely switch to being a defensive end in a 3-4. And we got some first rounders here. We got Trap, mid first round talent in the third round. So that's that's really good right there. That guy's insane value. I'm, I'm intrigued, 6-6, six, 3-13. Six, but then outside of that, you have the big dogs here. Clayton Worthy, mid first rounder of Georgia. You know, okay. Or Darren Younger from Oklahoma, mid first rounder. First round talent early. This guy might be the best player in the... It's all about who's going to be the best player in the draft. Is it Darren Younger at D-Tackle? A guy 6'6", 300 pounds. We could stay in the 3-4 and kick him out to defensive end. Top skills definitely look better than, say, some of the skills that we get from the defensive ends. Or do we look at Dwayne Bush? He looks real game good, too. It's one of the two. Do we go Dwayne Bush? Do we gamble that this guy here is going to be the best D-end? Or do we gamble that Darren Younger flipping from D-Tackle to defensive end would be the better player. So let me know in the comment section below what player we should select with the first overall pick in the 2022 draft. And that will do it for here today, guys. We'll kick off with this selection. <laughs> right, I literally made this pick. I, I clicked, I clicked up. I don't know, you can't even see my mouse. I clicked at the top corner to get back into the into the window, and it made this selection for me. Um, well, that kind of kills the mystique of uh, getting your input. But we it wasn't a bad player. We got the best player in the draft. Of course, no dev trait. I knew that was going to happen. But I guess this was the right call. Number one player in the draft, Darren Younger from Oklahoma. All right. All right. Thanks for watching and subscribe. I feel like I feel like I got to go uh, cope with this and get ready to record some of the Toronto series. So see you guys then. Unbelievable. Come on, man.